Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we've got some Munjat stalking and a bit of Corvid control coming up later on. But first, we join Chris Dalton as he takes a break from his DSC commitments and heads out for a bit of stalking on his own. Yeah, so it's a really nice stock actually. Uh, we're down in Hertfordshire, it's lovely wood this, a lot of old oaks. Pigeon, roost, roosting pigeons coming in. Um, actually we were concentrating on the roosting pigeons and walked into a group of three fallow pickets, which was a schoolboy area, but anyway. So we stalked really carefully through the wood. Um, we got into that kind of what we call them, mud jack hour. Just as the lights faded, there was very little moving up to that point. Uh, we saw only one mud jack. Um, but a two month jack here just initially there so we got into position and we couldn't see them coming through the bracket but they've just come into a bit of a clear area here so we shot the first one just down by that fallen stump and then a second uh, month jack just across in the in the bluebells just in front of me so i just give it a couple of minutes to settle down and then i'll um i'll go and deal with them but we've probably got half an hour half an hour of light left so we'll We'll do a grok in the field and then wander off back to the back to the truck. So that's quite quite nice, but really quite cold this evening. Beautiful out here though. Beautiful wood this, I love it in here. Using after the clock to alter just to get your timings right. Um, it's 
quite still actually, the noise is going to carry a long way. I really want to go and check some stubble fields out which are at the back of this wood, but the wind is blowing across us, so what I'm going to do is work, work down this wood and then kind of come round, effectively working down that the stubble fields that way. The wind will be blowing us out to the right and then we can come round into some deciduous woodland that's down below. So first off first thing i'm just going to see if there's any fallow out on the stubbles on the open ground because often there is um, we may be trying to shoot a pricket if so but failing that i want to come back and check the copses out see if we can get into a, a month jack just a cold month jack um, so that's the plan and we'll see what happens the rifle i've got is uh seiko um, 6.555 which is probably for my mind one of the probably best or one of the best all-round calibers for UK stoking so it's got I've got 120 grain ammunition in it so it's just ideal for possibly you could say a bit big for month jack I don't think so uh, but we've obviously got the fallow option as well so transfers quite well to non-lead ammunition as well I'm actually using lead this morning because uh, I'm a Yorkshireman and I've still got some lead to use up so I'm working through it but and there's not a restriction in this area because you know venison is actually going to be used ourselves um, so it's not going into a dealer or anything we'll see how we get on So absolutely stunning morning. Lo lovely area of the um, of the farm. This, to be honest, I've not I've not stoked it much. Um, quite good for fallow because there's some open grass and stubble um, and some winter barley sort of behind us. But the tricky thing was the wind. It was swirling quite awkwardly, so we kind of had to work a really big kind of loop to come round and then and then come back in. And the problem was the fallow this morning were all early doors just down here, wrong side of us. So here we got a couple of prickets in here but there was no backdrop because you shooting right down the valley and then the others had obviously winded as we went round and we did get a small group in a cover crop around the back edge but again we were still the wrong side of the wind we worked quite a bit of a loop around the back and then we we got into the wind a um, couple of month jack out a couple of decent books i wasn't after any decent books anyway we just wanted a you know a youngster um, and as you'll see here then we uh, i found one just around the around the back edge, just as we're coming into the wind, a little bit of a set aside, uh, old game crop area. There was a buck on the left hand side which I wasn't going to shoot but then um, this youngster came in across the across the crop um, on a mission really, probably coming into cover, so to kind of shout at it and bark it just to stop it briefly. Uh, nice shot off the bipod. So um, as always a big thanks to the, uh, to the farm and the estate for letting us come down because it's always a privilege to stalk somebody else's ground, um, particularly Big Phil showed us around, looked after us and let us get on with it and um, and also Maggie in the uh, on the management team for uh, welcoming us again so thanks very much to the guys. A little bit of a walk back in um, but just one of those mornings when it's a pleasure there's actually quite a little bit of warmth now in that cut as that sun comes up so we'll get this back to the uh, back to the chiller and then head on off back for breakfast but that's definitely what I call a, a good morning.
Just before we wrap up this week's show, just a bit of information about an exciting prize that's been run by the um, team at Talon Gear, which is run by Rabu and my business partner Steve, um, which is basically for a weekend up here in Ayrshire, later on in the year, stoking Robux, and that's at a time to be decided, so a mutually convenient time. So I'll hand over to Rab to give you some details. Hi guys, I'm Rab Miller, co-owner of South Asia Stocking, and as Chris says, Talon Gear as well. Really, really excited to offer you this competition. All you need to do to enter the, the Roebuck competition is follow the, the social media links below and follow the online instructions. Winners will be picked at random and we will arrange a date to, a date to suit both you and us. That's great. That's a great prize, guys. So it's worth entering. It doesn't cost you anything. Look, we will look forward to seeing you up here. Um, Great stalking later in the summer months. We've got some cracking Robux. There's always potential bonus for a red stag as well. And just to reiterate, the competition is a week weekend, including accommodation, up here in South Asia, plus two days of stalking. So hopefully we'll see somebody later on. That sounds like a great prize. So if you fancy a chance of winning, head on over to Talon Gear and drop them a like on the socials. Up next, we've got a bumper session with Mark Ripley. First up, he's heading out with his trusty Beretta to thin out the crows hammering a local maize crop. After that, he's back on the Corvids with the air gunning show. Mark sets up in a cattle barn, hoping to thin out even more of the problem birds. So this morning I've come down to this dairy farm to see if I can do something about the crow population. They've been hammering these maize fields. Now these maize fields have just been planted and the crows are there pulling out all the fresh shoots. So I'm going to see if I can set up a hide and uh, just give them a little bit of a thin out. So the farmer's got a gas gun set up in that field which has gone off about 30 seconds ago and already you can see there's birds back on that field. They've just gotten used to the gun and they'll take off, they'll fly around and then they'll start dropping straight back in on that field. So what the crows have been doing is they've been pulling up the smaller shoots here to get to the seed below and um, you'll see as you look along the rows and that there's patches where there's, there's sort of big areas and that um, missing where the birds have been along and just pecked out the smaller shoots. So on some of these fields the farmers actually had to re-seed some big areas where um, the crows have just hammered it. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably set a hide up along this hedgerow here uh, it seems to be a sort of a reasonably good flight line coming to and fro across this field. So I'm hoping with a few decoys out, I might be able to get a, uh, a few shots. Right, so, one hide. Hopefully that'll uh, do the trick. you notice know, so I've got a hedge behind me to hide any silhouette and I'm also in the shadow here. So I'm hoping this will be quite a good spot once I've got a few decoys out. Got all the decoys out, so I've got my trusty old Beretta with me today. This is normally my foxing gun, but it makes a nice sort of hide gun as well. Being um, easy to load that without having to break the barrel and actually have the hide a little bit smaller. So yeah, I like this gun. It's nice and easy to shoot too. Those crows coming in, so I'm going to um, get my earplugs in and get set up. The old camera going there's a few buzzing around now.
I was going to set up just a bit further down the hedge here, but as it happens, they seem to be floating in from the corner of this field. I'm getting most of my shots over that corner, so um, it's just what I didn't. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have pulled them over as well. As it's happening, it's working quite well because they're just coming over the hedge. So I think their attention is already looking at the decoys out in the field and they're just missing me in the hides out here because I'm pretty sure, especially now the sun's come round, that they're, um, they'd probably be able to see me. But getting, getting a few though, nice and steady. So I had a few quite high ones there, which is quite surprising really, because normally I'd be using fives, but I'm using sixes today. I guess it's just a case of just get it in the right place, get the pattern in the right place, and get a good, good shot count on them. It's enough to bring them down. That was a long one. I'll have to get a scope for this, for this gun before long. Start dialing it in. <laughs> oh, he missed him. I thought we a bit of chicken and everything for that one. Well, the hide certainly seems to be working well. None of these birds have uh, spotted me yet until it's too late. So it um, makes a change because usually uh, crows don't, don't miss anything, unlike myself. come down the next field. So I've been pegging the dead birds out as I've gone. Just every time I shoot two or three if they're on the backs now I'll go out and put a little bit of wire up underneath the uh, underneath the beak there and then peg them in the ground. Um, also what I've been doing is I've been bringing the, the plastic decoys, I've been bringing them in nearer the hide and putting the dead birds further out um, in the field so that as the crows come over, as they see them, they're obviously the dead ones are more realistic because they're real. <laughs> they're just dead. But um, if I keep the decoys nearer the, uh, the hide then it means the birds have got to get closer. So potentially if they do Sus that it's um, it's a trap. Then uh, it's a bit too late because they're too close to the hide.
wind's picking up now, it's making some quite challenging shooting when they turn on that. Because very often, if you miss with the first shot or they spot you, they'll just turn on the wind and the wind takes them. They go twice as fast. Well, it looks like the action's dried up for today, so I'm going to have a clear up and a count up of all the, all the crows, but there's a few out there. There's at least seven more in the field behind, so I'm going to go have a walk around and pick them all up. So that wasn't too bad. It's a final count of 53, so it wasn't too bad. A few less on the uh, field here. Still quite a few more about, but... Um, so the action sort of dried up for today, so that's it here, and uh, I'll get home, get my stuff sorted, get back out Fox and this evening. Right, well I am out bright and early this morning, it's about 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm down at the dairy farm. I was down there yesterday and I was doing a few bits and there's an awful lot of crows and magpies in the yard. Now the crows are down there feeding on the maize silage, which is uh, obviously for the cattle, and also the uh, magpies, they're just here, there and everywhere all around the yard. So although this is a dairy farm, it's also a sheep farm. The magpies cause an awful lot of damage and that during the lambing season. So although we're not in the lambing season at the moment, any opportunity to knock over these very wily birds is, um, well, you just got to take it because they're so notoriously hard to shoot. So being that we're hitting the crows this morning, I've brought with me the Brocock Sniper. This is in 0.25 and it certainly dishes out a fair bit of punch, which is ideal because crows are particularly tough birds. You will also see I've got that top with an Element Helix scope, that's a 6 to 24 by 50 and that's held on as always with sports match mounts. So yeah, that's the basic plan for the morning, so let's get down to the yard and have a look see what's around. I'll keep the rifle in the front because you never know what we might bump into on the way down. Well, the farmyard is surprisingly quiet this morning. There's just one or two crows just circling around and just dropping into the yard now. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll um, I'll go and see if I can find somewhere in the barn or somewhere to to wait and just see what drops in. This cow shed usually makes for a good spot to ambush stuff in the yard from because you've got those slats in the uh, in the wall here. Uh, it allows you to shoot through that without being seen, and it means also that I can move around in here, hopefully again without being seen, and just pop up and shoot out through the gaps. 
the back of the cow shed also looks out over a couple of little slurry pits there and that again is also another good spot for magpies and crows. All right, let's have a little look, see what's around them. Well, that crow just landed in the farmyard perfectly in range. He's just gone straight down from that. That 0.25, that does certainly deliver quite a wallop. Right, we'll let things settle down a little bit and have a look over the other side. Well, I just spotted a little flash of movement just down by the bottom of that fence post and I looked through the scope up just see the head and neck of a magpie just above the grass there so I uh, just had to sort of like come up a little bit and lean on my forearms against this bar and I was able to get a steady enough shot just to um, to get that that was only about 30 meters something like that so that's a magpie down I hate magpies They might well draw one or two more in too. They quite often, if they see one of their own dead on the ground, they'll land on a fence post or something and start calling to it. That one was pretty close. About 17 metres. <laughs> well, I think I'll go and grab those couple of birds that are laid out in the farmyard there. I don't think it does any good having them laid down on their back. I think it might put others off. Well that's a couple of less pests, crying a magpie there. Nice to get the magpies, that's for sure, because they are real buggers to get. Let's have a walk about, see what else we can find. So you can see here that even though the maze is covered, the birds have still either pecked holes in the cover or they've uh, found some existing holes and are using those to get the maze underneath. Well, it's gone quite quiet around the farmyard now in the field, so I 
think what I'm going to do is I'll come back a little bit later when um, hopefully, like the other day, it'll be a little bit a uh, bit busier around here, be a few more crows around. Right, off to work. Right, I'm back in the same cow shed that I was stood in this morning. And I've just, uh, excuse the cows, I just shot a uh, magpie that landed on the maze just there. Unfortunately, I forgot to press record, so I haven't got that one on video. But uh, that seems to be a little bit more traffic so afternoon, so hopefully I'll get a few more shots. It's actually quite handy here because they tend to land on the roof of this cow shed and then drop down into the yard, which means obviously when I'm here, it gives me a chance as they drop in, I can get behind the rifle and sort of get on roughly where they're going to land. So hopefully, when they've actually touched down, it's just a case of just tweaking the rifle over a little bit and shouldn't give away too much movement. Another crow down. It's probably a bit hard to see that one because the sun was shining straight in on me and I was getting a bit of a shadow or something off of these slats for that one but I managed to just about pick it out on the tire there. Jacked all there as well. Definitely a steady stream of uh, stuff coming in. So I'm using one of the little PAR 007, it's a, actually a night vision add on this, but I'm using it uh, to record footage through because it records a really good colour day screen. So if you're after a, a cheap um, way of videoing your, uh, your daytime shooting or your nighttime shooting for that matter, then one of these little PAR 007s, I think they're uh, around about sort of. 300, 350 quid, something like that. There's several different models you can get. This one's just the, the cheapest one. But they're, uh, they're good little units. A few crows have landed on the maze and that, but uh, they're obviously seeing the, um, the dead birds out there and they're getting put off because they're they're not coming down to feed they're just flying off again they're a bit too wary at the minute i better go out and move them well i think i've had the best of it here there's been nothing else come in for the past sort of half hour since i moved those uh, dead birds um so i can hear them out in the uh, the fields here they're actually out on the slurry pit just next to me here and I can hear a magpie and now a couple of the magpies chattering over the back there. So I think I'll just have a little wander around and... Oh, hold on. Maybe I'll give it just a little bit longer. <laughs> well, I think the action's definitely dried up now, but I've managed to knock a few down, so it's kept the others off the maze anyway, if nothing else. Right, I'm going to walk back to the truck and just keep my eyes peeled in the fields just to see if uh, there's anything else around so we can get one more before we uh, get back to the truck you never know I might be lucky
Well, that was a rather satisfying final shot of the day. I'd literally just come up over this bank here, heading back to the truck, and I was spotting a magpie. I don't know whether he'd seen me or not, but he was sat up on the wire there. He was 59 metres from, from here. And uh, I got down to the bipod here, dialed in, I dialed in 4 MOA for that shot. And wallop, straight off the wire, job done. I, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I just made it worthwhile bringing out the FAC air rifle this evening rather than um, a standard 12 foot pound because to be honest pretty much every other shot that I've taken this evening I could have just as easily done with a uh, sub 12 foot pound air rifle but anyway yeah it's just really nice to be able to stretch the range every now and again and uh, not one over like that there's a few crows out in the field here but uh, they're pretty wily every time you sort of stop they fly off but uh, I'm hoping I might be able to get close enough for one in a minute for a shot. Some of these youngsters around here are a bit dopey. Oh, God, you're beautiful. <laughs> Love that one, that was 79 metres. That was a fair old stretch. Well, that tops the magpie, beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'll park up and go and grab him. Well, I've been using the new Element Optics app for these longer shots, and it certainly seems to be pretty, uh, pretty damn near anyway, from what I found. It was certainly near enough for this crow. So I shot that one straight in the back, so when the shoulder blades it's gone straight through and out the chest. So I think it was 79 metres, that one. That's a fair stretch for an air rifle, even an FAC one. So I'm pleased with that. Right, that really is it for the episode now. <laughs> and don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Some great action from Mark there, showing us how to deal with those problem birds. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. If you like what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. I'm Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.